Welcome to this week's episode of Build Value by Choice. I'm your host, Nana Bansu, Infinite Horizons Incorporated. Our website is www.infhorizons.com. Check out the tab, how it works, and it will show you everything that we do to help you uh, grow and scale the value of your business uh, to the next level. This week, we are going to be talking about the issue of timing and how it, uh, when it, how it affects um, the likelihood of success or the impact that it has into your ability to be successful. In other words, sometimes things may be out of your hands. We explore the truthness of it, uh, especially coming from uh, the book uh, written by known author Malcolm Gladwell. Uh, he has a book out uh, that's been out for a while called uh, Outliers. And this week we have a uh, return interview, a follow-up interview with um, longtime attorney, uh, business, philanthropist, and entrepreneur, Mark Pierce. Mark is a co-founder of was, uh, Wyoming LLC attorney.com and cloudpeaklaw.com. Uh, the previous episode with Mark, we talked about the issue of succession planning. And this week, one of the things I wanted to explore with Mark is, um, I had asked Mark, hey, Mark, what is you know, what are some of the things that differentiate people that succeed and people that don't? And Mark mentioned the issue of timing. So I wanted to explore a little bit about this topic um, as far as timing is concerned and business success is concerned. Now, Mark, again, is, for those who may not know, again, he's a co-founder of Wyoming Attorney LLC, I mean, wyomingllcattorney.com. Uh, he's an expert in legal advice regarding real estate and uh, federal tax planning, uh, business tax planning, small business planning, business exit planning, and strategies and asset protection. For the past five years, they've been growing the company from a legal service as a service to a company in a box as a service, helping over 10,000 companies remain private and protect their assets through legal means. Welcome to Build Value by Choice, Mark. Ah, thank you, Nana. It's good to be here, and thank you for having me. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, when it comes to business, how important do you think timing is? I think timing, uh, in my own experience, has been the the critical and most essential point or uh, part of any business. It's not the only part of any business. Business has to be well run, well organized to be able to continue to be successful within that business. But without timing, I don't think that it has much of a chance. Um, I've given as an example uh, Tesla. Now you say Tesla was at the forefront of electric car, electrical car manufacturing and marketing, uh, but it wasn't. There were a number of companies that emerged prior to Tesla. A friend of mine had managed to invest in the first 10 that he thought were coming to the public market, lost money in all 10, and then number 11 or whatever it was, was Tesla. So for whatever reason, Tesla had an idea. That idea wasn't unique, but the timing of that idea and the perpetuation of that idea were unique. So I think timing is a critical part to any business. If timing is critical and we don't control timing, I want to explore a little bit about this, right? So here's the thing, a couple of things. We just give the example of uh, Elon Musk, you know, failing multiple times and 11 times he succeeded with Tesla and all other things. We know about uh, uh, Thomas Edison trying 10,000 know, times different uh, things before he invent invented the light bulb. So two things. One is, how do you know, you know, if you should keep going or you just going on a full you know, errand, or do you think, uh, you know, hey, and also the fact that you need to have be able to have enough capital <laughs> reserves in place to be able to sustain you through this whole process. Well, I think that you have to know your industry, and I think you have to be involved in that industry. And I think one of the difficulties that we have as individuals is that we think that we have more abilities than we actually have, and. Uh, sometimes you find people jumping into an industry and then jumping out and jumping into another industry and then jumping out, trying desperately to find something that's you and me, new and unique that gives them the timing that allows them to succeed. So I've used this as an example, the electric vehicle manufacturing companies and how that worked. There are a number of other vehicles, and I'll use one of my businesses as an example as well. And that was the commoditization of legal services that began quite some time ago, but we did not have the technology to be able to interface with questionnaires and attorneys and with drafting of documents until quite recently. And those applications become more and more robust. 
And what they'll teach you at most Army War Colleges is the person who gets there first with the most will win. So when you look at these legal services companies who have come in and have begun paving the way for alternative business systems, ABSs, and that sort of thing, they were at the forefront. And so you look at LegalZoom and a lot of these other companies that have come in to do that. Is their business model entirely the correct business model? Our own view is that it may well be, but it's not the only business model that can be successful within the commoditized legal services industry. So that when we came in in 2016, 2017, I think we had two distinct advantages. We had technology and we had a regulatory environment that allowed us to get in quickly and efficiently and succeed with a different type of model. So our timing is different than legal zooms by almost a decade, but I don't think it hurt because our timing was more intuitive about what was going on within the legal profession and what was going on within the regulatory profession and the internet tech in the technology profession that allowed us a leg up in many respects. So that was my view of timing after having been in the business for 30 years, both from the standpoint of technology and the law and from the standpoint of, of accounting. Because if you look at our services on, on our website, it's not just law, it's formation services, but we also have bookkeeping services. We have tax services, all of which are highly automated and efficient so that we've reduced the cost on those systems down to virtually nothing in comparison to where they were five years ago. Our competitors have not kept up with that. Now, there could be somebody else who comes along and does it better than us and knocks, knocks, knocks us out of the saddle. I don't know. But I think we've got enough of an advantage that we'll be able to perpetuate that lead over the next several years. Yeah, so in that case, is there such a thing as, uh, because somebody listening may say, okay, then is there such a thing as being too early or too late to start a business, or is it all based on time? Well, I think that there are instances where you're too early to start a business. And I think that would if commoditize legal services. I did it on your previous podcast. The idea came to me in 1983. The idea wasn't successful of implementation until about 2015 to 2018. So if you sat there from 1983 to 2015 trying to commoditize, you're wasting your time. Developing a good expertise, but wasting your time. I think that where we are now, with the number of people who have entered that field, I think that you are a little late to the game. So that you should join with people who are already in the field or find something different to go do. So I think timing is everything, but it's not the only thing. But if you got, if you have the right timing and you perpetuate the timing at the time that you get it with good management practices, then you'll be successful. And those windows vary by industry. Our window, I think, was probably about five or six years. I think that that window is coming on. And I look at what people are trying to do to catch up with that window. And the problem at this point within the technological advancement within our field is that if I started this year trying to compete with somebody who, st who started last year, they're a year ahead. I put everything into it that I can to compete with somebody who's putting everything that, that, that they have into it. And by this time next year, they'll be two years ahead of me. That's the problem with the timing in that industry is the harder you try, uh, the further you fall behind. So the timing is everything not only for getting into the industry, but perpetuating whatever leads and advantages you have. And that's a function of good management. And you've got some pretty good firms out there perpetuating that advantage. How do you know when the timing is, is closed? Like, you know, I'm sure, you know, it involves a lot of market research, but when you go to look, just how do you know? I think it's the, for my own experience, it's been the practical application of it. And I've watched the evolution of technology within the legal and accounting fields for quite some time. And it's only been, in, particularly in the accounting field, bookkeeping services, uh, differentiating those from tax services is that within bookkeeping, they were behind. But there was a book called The, the New Machine Age that was written, I think about 2013, 2014, that dealt with professions that I read. And I said, these, these guys know, and I can never pronounce the guy's name. I think he's from Iceland. It's one of those long Scandinavian names that have a lot of consonants in it. But just a brilliant writer. And I looked at that, I read that and I said, now we're finally at the precipice of these changes beginning to happen in these fields. So I went to a presentation about two years ago and ran into a group of individuals who, oh, I don't know if they've read that book or not, but they came into this field and said, we can commoditize bookkeeping. And so we formed a relationship with them to do that. So 
I think it was more of the standpoint of my having been in that industry for a long period of time, understanding some of the macroeconomic developments within that industry and the tectonic change, uh, the tectonic shift that you saw within that industry as it rolled over and became more commoditized. And that to me was inter interesting. So I think it's that hands-on approach. So you can do all the market research that you want, but if you've been in practicing in that field, you'll see those things coming if you're paying attention. Now, uh, in terms of timing, do you think timing can be manipulated? Because um, a lot of times, because I'm actually going to take this question a bit further. Okay, so let's just say that we're in the you know, Bitcoin age or metaverse age or what have you. Do you think there's some kind of, you know, people can induce it to try and force it so they can be like, you know, take advantage of that opportunity? And the other thing then is, there's this adoption curve of early adopters and, you know, and lately all the way to late, late adopters. Are we, how do we know that, hey, you know, you too, we talk about, hey, there's such a thing as being too early to start a business. And, you know, potentially, you know, you can get burned if you're too, too early to start. And then you can miss out if, if you're just, you know, a little late to it. So um, how do you, um, what, what can people do? Uh, you know, people are looking for kind of, some kind of hope or you know something which is maybe they you know they fresh out of you know business school or maybe they just you know, they just said look you know the corporate world is not for me i want to do something else um how do you make sure that you're not you know we, you're not going into the wrong venture too early and how do you determine that hey this is just being induced and the industry is not really ready uh for this kind of mass uh adoption yet uh, well, yeah, I mean, you know, it's like playing cards. If you're playing a card game, you don't put all your money on the table in the first in the first shuffle. <laughs> you know, you, you should go in slowly and get a feel for everything and really begin to understand that over time. And then that will predicate, you know, what your involvement is going to be within that field uh, after that. You know, what you've got to remember about capitalism, I think people have a tendency to forget it because we forget this is because we've become so involved in capitalism, capitalism, what a great, great system. Well, you know, all systems and feudalism ended in the 14, 15, 16, 17th hundreds, but it took a long time to die. Capitalism will die and there'll be a new system. So what happens when capitalism dies? So people that haul out capitalism, be, capitalism as being the shibboleth for all your problems, I think your efforts are misplaced. If you took a look at this cryptocurrency, that could be the death of capitalism right there. But the goal of capitalism is to succeed. And you take a look at Meta. Meta has succeeded by basically putting everybody else out of business within that field so that essentially they're the only person in that field right now, depending on what you think that field is. So Meta's come in. They've been very successful by getting rid of all their competition. That's an antitrust issue. The same thing that came along with, false, with, uh, with some of the great uh, manufacturing conglomerates in the 1880s, 1890s that necessitated the antitrust laws. We have the same thing happen within technology now. But a technology is evolving so quickly that there are new opportunities that rise all the time that are spinoffs from things like Meta or Amazon and what. You're not going to get into the business of competing with Amazon right now. That would be suicidal. But what you can do is you can find industries within that industry that allow you to compete within that context or keep an idea of, of keep, a, keep an eye out of watching new industries as they begin to evolve. But you have to put yourself into play. And to do that, you have to involve yourself with the people, the seminars, the presentations, all these things, because you never know where you're going to run into an opportunity and you're probably not going to run into it sitting surfing the internet all day. You've got to get out and meet people. It's that contact, you know, that whole contact of being able to sit across from somebody and see what somebody else is doing. And I've always been amazed by some of the, the great information I've gotten from sources that you wouldn't necessarily consider to be uh, somebody who's involved in giving business information, like the political science philosophers, you know, that I came across this idea of the end of capitalism. What do we do? Oh, dear. Well, we're looking for capitalism when we found that. What happens when we move beyond capitalism? Would it be something different, a part of? Does it transition from that being a base? How do we get there? Those, I think, to be interesting questions. So the, so the answer is get involved. You know, get involved in your community projects, get involved in your political projects, get involved in your charitable projects, get beyond what it is that you're doing, simply sitting in your house, looking out the window or watching a screen all day and get into your community 
And then you'll start to see the opportunities that arise. The problem, problem isn't finding an opportunity, it's winnowing them down. You know, I, I'm 65, I look out there, what would I do now? Oh gosh, you know, if I were 25, it would be incredible what I'd be able to do or would, it would try to do. I don't even know if you'd be successful, but the point is to try. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, just going to conferences, seminars, volunteering, just uh, being an active member of your community. Um, uh, well, that's, that's how you gain tell, I guess. Yeah, you know, just the, the initial conversation that you and I had. I'm like, where's this guy been? I, this is really good stuff. And then the questions you said of, of the, the, the context of the interviews was like, these really forced me to think. So it's been a great relationship for me and I would never have met you if I hadn't gotten involved in this field. Yeah, that's that's true. Um, yeah, and I, I've met great people like yourself too. So um, so that, that, that just you know, hits home. So here's the thing though, there's just two things. One is, I know you mentioned technology. Are there other industries where timing is particularly important, or it's just kind of you know universal? Well, I've been so heavily involved in law, accounting, and technology for so long. I have a tendency to look over um, other industries, but um, you know, all industries are constantly evolving. And um, one of the industries I looked at several years ago was the trucking industry. And I think that logistics is something that um, Jeff Bezos came out and said, I'm not going to haul things around in a truck in 10 years. I'm going to drop them off by drone. Now, that's an interesting way in which to approach logistics. I don't think that anybody in the trucking industry said, look, we're going to use drones to deliver things. That would have been beyond the, the pale of what they do. And yet he came in from the outside and provided that expertise for you. So I think that there are opportunities that, re that arise in old industries. You just have to be able to look beyond that industry of what your solution is. There's a very famous case in trust law where a guy had made a bunch of money with cable cars. And so in 1900, when he drafted his trust and left the money to his kids, he said, you will always invest in cable cars. Well, cable cars died in about the 1920s, 1930s. So the, the beneficiaries came in and said, I think we should expand that to mean transportation. And the judge said, no, he said cable cars. He didn't mean transportation. So that trust ceased to exist in a fairly short period of time. Mm -hmm. So if you look at yourself being involved in trucking, is that necessarily the way that you should be looking? Because with, with artificial intelligence and additional means of transportation and logistics, would trucking be the way in which you would approach logistics at this point? And I'd have to say probably not. I don't know for sure because I'm not in that business. So those are the sorts of things that you always look for. What do you see as far as trends in industry is right now? Because we know right now, okay, maybe maybe I missed out on the certain boat or, or I put all my cards in into a certain venture and before I got to listen to your um, your conversation and your advice on this episode. Um, what do I do now? You know, where should I you know, look? What are some of the things that I should look to next? Taking whatever lessons that I've learned from uh, failed ventures and say, okay, this is where the industry is going. And from a timing perspective, I wanna make sure I don't miss this one or, or don't let this one also kind of pass me by and jump in. It's almost like real estate, jump <laughs> in at the top. And uh, why not? So what do you see? Number one is what do you see um, you know, um, uh, as uh, trends uh, you know, industries, which industry, emerging industries are hot right now or, or looking to be hot over the next uh, 12, 12 to 24 months so that people can uh, kind of time themselves appropriately. Uh, I think some of the more interesting industries have been these ride share programs. Like in my neighborhood, they have these lime, these little, uh, these little moped type of things that get around people, leave them wherever. And, uh, I looked at that and I thought, well, somebody just thought of that. And they began putting this thing together because they're probably a young person who couldn't afford a car. <laughs> and right. they came out and said, this would be something to be interesting to do. I think that, what you have to do as a young person is say, okay, sit around, talk to your friends. What do they, where do they think things are heading? What do they think things are going? Why do they think they're going the way that they are going? And like I said, on an MIT conference one time for, for business entrepreneurship, and one of the guys came up and says, oh, this is all well and good, but you have to make payroll on Monday. <laughs> so my advice is to people, go get a job that pays your bills. Okay, and then keep your eye open, 
don't give up the dream and involve yourself in your community and get ideas as to what benefits that community because we're evolving very rapidly here and you've seen the transition on the way people work where they work from what they're looking forward to and you've seen the generational differences so if you'd have said that somebody's going to put a put a motor on a moped and somehow through the internet lease these things to drive all over town i would have thought well that's crazy because i wouldn't get on one because i'd be afraid of being hit by a car and at my neighborhood they're all over i'm afraid of being hit by a moped now so that'd be my advice is to keep your eyes open and realize that as an emerging generation the things that you think are emerging now will probably be a reality in 20 or 30 years just keep your eyes on that awesome that's great again thank you very much really appreciate your generous uh, the generous time that you, you share with us and the insights that you share with us. I think it's really great as far as um, making sure that you have enough. Now, now, one of the things that I wanted to ask was, you know, like, you know, what about business owners? You know, I guess I suppose that business owners are always looking to innovate. Um, and so we talk about young people, hey, get a job and keep your eyes open. You know, if the next thing hits and you time it right, then you can transition out of, out of your, your, your job. What about business owners? How does that translate into business owners who are running things and need to keep their eyes open for the next big, big thing so they yes. can innovate uh, and keep their going concern you know, going. I, such a great question. What we did is we put together a website that allows you to form your entities, do your bookkeeping, do your tax work, and get assistance on an ad need basis without paying too much or spending too much time doing it. That allows you for the payment of that money to spend time with your children, spend time with your family, spend time with your colleagues, spend time with the community to focus on the things in life that make a difference to you. And included within that would be the necessity of evolving your business over time. You can't do that if you're balancing your books and paying bills at the end of every month. And I watched my father just sweat that for three, four days every month and then try to run a business and try to have a family and they just can't do it. So we've commoditized all those services. Take advantage of that commoditization and get out and live your life. That's great. That's awesome. And all of that information, you can find out where? Uh, WyomingLLCAttorney.com or CloudPeakLaw.com. Yep. So we're gonna, and we're gonna have that also as part of the show notes. Uh, so people, in case you do your driving or you're out and about, you can you know pull it up um, once you get in front of your computer or your phone. All right, well, thank you again, Mark. Really appreciate um, the past yeah. two conversations that we've had. And I look forward to uh, you know having you back uh, sometime in the future soon. Well, yeah, send me the link to your, to your uh, site there. I re really want to start listening to what other people have to say. And I hope that we maintain contact. I'd love to keep in contact with you. That's awesome. Uh, well, that's it for this week, everyone. Uh, once again, uh, check us out, subscribe, share with your friends. And you can follow us on uh, Facebook and let us know what you think. Bye for now.